Jesus is the same. I don't know what the full post policy that would be, but I would suspect that it means that God was at the point of the main after all these people would not be loving. But that didn't happen. That's a hypothetical issue. It didn't happen. We need to see you. So God has not stopped being loving. I don't, I'm not absolutely sure that he could, but I suspect that, he, that that is the case. But if you believe perfection, perfect being can become imperfect, that's what it means. That With your definition. He could, he could definition. be not loving at all, right? Is God truth? Yes, of course he is truth. I'm not sure that about the is. The truth. Can he be can he be less than the truth and become not the truth and be opposite? Imperfect. I'm not sure what that terminology means. This is the truth matter. Is he so is he the source of the truth? And he always speaks the truth. Well yeah, you can't come always speaks the truth, yes, absolutely. But that's not really so, what you were saying was far so, deeper than that. So can he become imperfect and not always speak the truth in your concept of God? While Jesus was a man on earth, he could have chosen to lie. He didn't, but he could have done. Satan genuinely tempted Jesus. He did not give in to Satan's temptation, but I believe the possibility was there that he could have done. Fair enough. This is what you believe, right? We offer you Islam, an Islamic concept of God, where God is perfect all the time. We invite you to embrace this belief. But, but where, that perfect, where, listen, that Douglas, perfection listen. That naturally God, includes invitation. Listen, that perfection never, naturally includes invitation. Want, we, concept, we want you to embrace, invite you to, because God is perfect all the time. He never becomes imperfect. And that's one of the reasons why he's worthy of worship. A perfect being. And ultimately, I think that understanding of God is illogical. Ultimately, I think that understanding of God is illogical. Because free from perfection means he doesn't have any limitation. But if you're free from perfection, you cannot become part you cannot in any way subject yourself. Therefore, that, but that is a therefore an imitation. It naturally gives rise to an imitation. Itself, it becomes contradictory. It becomes contradictory. Therefore, I think it's illogical. That definition is illogical. Let's have a look. So, if God has knowledge, did anyone give knowledge to God? The one God that we both believe in, right? Without making any difference to three centers of consciousness or not. Do you believe this one God received knowledge from outside. No. Right. So this is inherent. Certainly for a sake of discussion, I would say no. So this knowledge is inherent. Yeah? Yes. Can this knowledge be not perfect? It is inherent. In a being who did not I'm begin not sure to exist. It makes sense to call knowledge perfect. Knowledge be is knowledge. If you are not given knowledge and you had it your own self, would your knowledge be limited? <laughs> My knowledge is limited. Not you. No, 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 no. Not you. A being that we're talking about who is God, who did not begin to exist, eternally in existence, possessing knowledge, would he be limited in his knowledge? Like someone knows more than him? Or someone restricts his knowledge? There wouldn't be someone to restrict his knowledge. But so not, his knowledge is unrestricted? No, no, no. It's, just because there isn't someone to restrict doesn't mean that it's possible that it couldn't be a restriction. By what? Just, just because there's not an outside agent, an outside agent to do the restriction doesn't mean that the knowledge itself couldn't be restricted. As it happens, my understanding of the Allah is that his knowledge is unrestricted, and my understanding of Yahweh as a triune being, as a whole of the triune being, is that his knowledge is, not, is unrestricted. So you believe the knowledge of Yahweh can be restricted? No, I mean, I mean philosophically, the knowledge of a divine being could be restricted. As it happens, the two divine beings that we believe in, Allah and Yahweh, their knowledge isn't unrestricted. It isn't restricted. It's unrestricted. We believe the knowledge of Allah is not restricted. Yes, yes, I understand that. Do you believe the knowledge of Yahweh is not restricted? Yes. Okay, so if it's not restricted, there's no limitation. That means he knows without any limitation. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay, certainly the father, that's true the father, yeah. Right. If you have a being who has no limitation in the knowledge, is his knowledge perfect or imperfect? I don't think it makes sense to call knowledge perfect or imperfect. It doesn't make sense to me. 
Knowledge is knowledge. When I say you can please, if you have knowledge of everything, it doesn't make sense. It should be perfect or imperfect. Knowledge is knowledge. Do you, do you know anything about perfect love? There's no such thing, is it? Now you will say there is no such thing as perfect love. There is no such thing as perfect knowledge. There is no such thing as perfect forgiveness. There is no such thing as complete knowledge. Complete knowledge. I agree with complete. complete knowledge. Yes. So if something is complete... Yahweh has complete knowledge. Allah has complete knowledge. Complete. In as much as they exist at all. So he has no deficiency. You believe Allah so he has no deficiency in his complete knowledge. Because he's not... Knowledge. He has no deficiency in his knowledge. Right. That's what I mean by perfection. Yes. For you to make it simple, right? <laughs> right. So we invite you to worship God, Allah, who is perfect, complete in his knowledge, complete and perfect in his attributes. Right, right. Rather than someone who can be ignorant, weak, someone who doesn't know I what he's doing. Point that ultimately the Muslim consciousness of God is illogical and I gave my reasons. I didn't explain it that well but I tried to give my try reasons again. why I believe that. Right? And you, you were trying to respond to that. No, try again. And you're, you're issued Douglas, that knowledge. I would like to give you, respond to that. I would like you to give me the opportunity. How or why is the Muslim concept of God illogical? Because the Muslim concept of God is that he's unlimited. Why is he's that illogical? Because in, it naturally leads to a limitation. If he's unlimited, that means he can't become a man. One, one aspect, to, one consequence of that is that he can't become a man. But that's a limitation in itself. He can't become a man. He can't do this one thing. So, no, no, the, so the concept of an unlimited being naturally leads to limitation. Therefore, it's illogical. It's self-contradictory. Okay. You're making a statement like this. You know what? The reason why something is not infinite because it cannot be finite. If we affirm something is infinite, by definition, this something is not finite. But you're saying, no, this is illogical. Why? Because the infinite cannot become finite, so it's illogical. Does that make any sense? Because the alternative God in, in, in the discussion, actually, the Christian God, because I'm a Christian, is the God that did do that, yes. Illogical, look, look. If this universe is here, is this universe infinite or finite? We don't know. Okay, what are the options? Did this universe have a beginning? Okay. Did the universe have a beginning? Yes. If it had a beginning, ultimately it has to be based on cause of someone or something that is uncreated. Uncreated. Yeah, yeah, get right. Right? Yes. Uncreated. Is that logical or illogical? That's logical. Logical. So you have to have a being, a cause for this universe who is uncreated, who is eternal, who is absolute, who is perfect. Um, just because I believe the cause might be absolute and perfect doesn't mean that... I, has to be. if he tells me that the cause has to be absolute and perfect. Has to be. No. If it's not absolute, then it's dependent on something else, right? Well, okay, now you've given a okay. definition of the word the absolute that I'm sure is, I don't think I would have given. Is God dependent or independent? For, for what? For anything. And everything. Um, for most things, God is independent. Is it? So, for most things, that means he's dependent for something. There might be something which I can think of which he's dependent for. There might so God be is dependent on something. No, no, I said there might be some things which like, I can think of. Like well, certainly when Jesus came to earth, he was dependent on his Mary to give him food so when he was a baby. So now, as you realize, if you remove Jesus' incarnation, everything seems to be you are redefining logic, you are redefining perfection, is because you have a problem with Jesus becoming like that. If that was the case, and you viewed it differently, actually look, infinite is infinite. So if someone like Jesus Christ doesn't fit in the equation, shouldn't you be thinking, actually my belief in Jesus may be totally wrong, totally illogical instead? You are redefining logic, redefining perfection, redefining infinity, just because you have Jesus Christ who has done all of that contradictory um, to logic and rationality. Uh, one thing I know is, I'm a limited human being, and if I'm to learn about God, God has to reveal himself to me. As God when I look at Jesus, I see that's what God has done. When I look at the Bible and I look at Jesus, that's what I see God doing, revealing himself to me. So therefore, when you look I, if my logic doesn't fit the God I see revealing himself to me, then my logic is the one that has to be wrong.
So your argument is, because your logic doesn't make three sense to you, therefore you should believe in Islam. Well, I would say that... I say, I say, you understand perfection, completion. I understand your definition of it. Yes, I don't know yet, your definition and yet, you want to be using. the God that you want to worship, he is not complete, because he can be incomplete. By your definition of these words, yes. Do you not agree with the definitions? Um, not always, no. Sometimes you agree, sometimes you disagree. Yeah. Why don't we have a common ground where we agree with the definitions? Right. But then that the problem with them is then these sentences that look like they're heretical. Where just because the definition's bad. The problem with that is you then end up saying things that look like they're heretical just because you've got bad definitions. Well, I said, if you if you hold heretical views, that's no, 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 no. It's not about having heretical views. It's about saying things that look heretical just because you've created the words with bad definitions. That's the problem about detecting definitions. If God gave us language, we can use the language to understand this, right? Do you agree? Yes. Right. In the way God described himself, has he described himself consistently throughout the times where he is like this? Or is it only in Christianity? Like what? Like which? Like he came and became ignorant. Like he came and became, you know, not, not, not fully perfect. No, because he, in the Old Testament he hadn't come and become ignorant. It was only from the New Testament that he became, became ignorant. Yeah. So you have a problem with the New Testament time. That's where the problem no, occurs. No, I don't have a problem with it. Shouldn't you? If God God revealed to me, that's that New Testament is part of what God has revealed in us to me. If God reveals to you in the book called the Puranas or Bhagavad Gita or the Upanishads of the Hindus, and it tells you that God incarnates into a turtle, into a fish, into a flower, you will say that's how God reveals to me, right? You will have no problem with that. Um, when it comes to the New Testament, we have the empty tomb to back it up. If God revealed to you, I don't know if there's a central miracle to so support back it up. Douglas, if you're born in India, it's most likely you'd believe in these things, right? That's quite possible. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. Suppose now you were born in a Hindu family, and this is what your scripture is. Now you meet Christians and you meet Muslims. What would you say? Which one is the correct answer of God? Oh, my revelation says God became a turtle. He, he became an avatar. One of the avatars was a turtle or a fish. So that's, that's what you're going to believe in, really, isn't it? You're going to suspend your rationality. I, I, and you're going to ask, ask I, I don't know enough about Hinduism to know if that is a belief in Hinduism. Do you know how long you've been saying this for? It's been made up. Right, but I do know that Douglas. in Christianity there is a central miracle, the empty tomb, Douglas, listen. to back up the truth of it. Do you know how long you have played this card? I don't know enough about Hinduism since the first time we met and we discussed. Many, many years ago. And still, and still, no, 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 Many, 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 many years ago since we talked and you keep on using the same ignorance card. I don't know enough about Hinduism. That's not good enough. I'm saying in Christianity, there's a central miracle. That's what, what makes it stand out. What miracle? The, the empty tomb. Were you there? The empty tomb. Were you there? The evidence back up. The you? evidence. I wasn't there. No. You weren't there. So, so you, you were not there and you called that a miracle? Yes. What miracle is it? The resurrection of Jesus. What miracle is it? A dead man came back from the dead. A dead man. Did he die in the first place? Yes. Were you there? No, I was not. Right. No, I was. So how do you know he was dead? Because blood. When they stick a spear in him, blood and water came out. And that, that means he's dead. Happen. Yes, it does. That can't happen unless he was dead. Hasn't people done that? What? Can you not do the same experiments? Be on the cross. Pierced through and blood comes out. Are you saying blood? Blood, blood came out. Yes, maybe. I said blood and water came out together. That can't happen unless you're dead. Has the experiment been done? Because you're talking about science and medical science now. If you haven't done any experiments to back this up, this is a wishful thinking. Now give me the medical establishment doing this experiment and saying, look, the reason why you can prove someone's dead, you pierce through and blood and water comes out. Have you got anything to back up? I mean, no. So it's a faith only. So it's not no, an evidence. No, no, no. I've heard no, no, no. Of medical and, sources. No, no. I've heard medi me no, 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 medical doctors heard. talk about this. So can you now provide experiments from 2,000 years of Christian history where people have done that? They 
Pierce, I, I've heard medical doctors give arguments. To no, no, I don't want arguments. I don't want arguments. True. I want evidence. And one was actually on the cross. They pierced through because crucifixion happened for a long time. I, that's not something you, you can do. As no, an no. Experiment. You, you provide the evidence. You can't eliminate such experiments. Excuse me. Are you saying Jesus was the only person who was during Roman times crucified and legitimately? No. Right. There are many people, and crucifixion didn't stop them there, did it? Um, they didn't know it was right. So, do you find any evidence that yes, if you pierced through someone who's on the cross and then... I've heard medical doctors talk about No, I don't want talks, rumours. I'm not interested in your rumours. I'm interested in facts. Where is the fact that this is what happened Sorry, from some yeah, that? The medical doctor is analysing the details of that event. No, not interested in rumours. No, no, no. When you talk about... Look, I want physical evidence that yes, if you put someone on the cross, well, well, even I don't have what I say. I, don't, I can't remember the details of these men. What these men then, don't said. Then, don't, then do not say this is evidence. This is a faith claim. No, it's not. You can believe. You can believe that Jesus actually went to Mars made of cheese. Sorry, you can believe that. If I spent That's your faith. If I went to university and spent three years studying physics, and the conclusion of that was that the universe is expanding, but then I forgot the details of what the evidence of that that you are is. Listen, Douglas. It's not a faith. Listen, Douglas. It's a belief based on evidence. I'm saying is, I don't have the if you make, if you make a claim that the reason why you consider it's a fact that he died because of he was on the cross and someone pierced through, this can be replicated. I want evidence from replication. Otherwise, it's just a faith. It's not an evidence. I, I dispute that. I, I, I dispute that. that. You have a theory. This is your theory, not a fact. It's not my theory. It's your belief theory, it's isn't other it? People, other people's reasons. No, I don't want reasons. I want actual evidence. So next time, when you talk about that he was dead, bring actual evidence sorry, sorry. that he was All dead. our discussion today has been reasoning things out. So this is what I'm like to be no, no. things out, but you're not willing to let other listen, listen. reason things no, no. out. What I'm saying is, the moment you say something is a fact, I am sorry, I demand evidence, not your theories. Okay, so next time, I want evidence that he was dead, then to talk about that he was resurrected. Because resurrection only can happen if you're dead in the first place, right? So, establish that he was dead. Okay, we have to go and pray, and we will continue the discussion until uh, next time. You take care. Okay, take care. Um, كنز الكرم مولى النعم هذه الأمم بشريعته الله